In this video, we're going to look at how we size the transistors whenever we are creating a more complicated NMOS circuit. So this page here is a bit of revision. We talked through this whenever we looked at the very first NMOS inverter. Now we said here that we could think about the NMOS inverter here as having the depletion load and it has an enhancement drive. And if we can think about this in terms of a potential divider, so each of these will provide a resistance. And we could say that this is going to have resistance R1 and this will have resistance R2. So it's not exactly like this, but it's a good gives a good indication of how we're going to work through the uh, work forward with this. So it means that in order to ensure that we get a low voltage at the output whenever we put a high voltage in, so that is we're going to put a 5 volts in, we want to make sure that we get a low voltage out. Now the low voltage has to be less than the threshold, which is less than 1 volt. So we decided at that point it was going to be 0.5 volts. So whenever we put 5 volts in, we wanted to ensure we get 0.5 volts at the output. And the way that we did this is we thought about these two as perform having uh, being the two resistors and they would form a potential divider. So we're able to say then that the voltage at this point here is going to be the ratio of the overall voltage, which the overall voltage, if we take the voltage up here as 5 volts, so that's the supply rail voltage. So it's going to be the ratio of the supply rail voltage times the R2 divided by R1 plus R2. And this is going to be defined so that we can get a value of 0.5 volts. So we pick the values of resistors R1 and R2 in effect to give us the value of 0.5 volts for this little equation. But of course this R2 is actually the transistor so we'll replace the R2 with the, the transistor for the moment. Now if this transistor is at 5 volts, that is it's turned on, it means that all of the current is going to flow down through this resistor here. So in effect the voltage output here is going to be the voltage 5 minus the uh, over the volt drop across this resistor which is the current through it times the resistance which is just our I times the resistance R1. Now whenever the voltage here is uh, sitting at 0 volts it means that this is open circuit. When it's open circuit there's no current flowing down through here so this point here rises up to the value of our 5 volts. Now what we did in order to work out how we generate this correct ratio for these transistors is that we looked at the various currents that we have flowing in these devices and we made a comparison and we made an equality between them and we found out that in that case that in order to ensure that we got a 0.5 volts in output for a 5 volts at the input, we would have to make sure that the width upon length ratio for the drive transistor, that's this one here, is 4 times the width upon the length ratio for the load transistor, and that's the load transistor here. So what we were saying here then, and this is the crux of this, this page here, is that the channel area for the enhancement drive, okay, that is the bottom transistor, is going to be four times bigger than the channel area for the depletion load. That's the one up here. So that's just this equation here. But we must ensure that this ratio is kept in order to provide that low voltage of 0.5 volts on the output whenever the input goes to the high voltage of 5 volts. So how are we going to do that? So for example, if we decided to create an AND gate for this, it would mean that we would have another transistor on the bottom. So let's have a little look and we'll see how we're going to ensure that we keep the ratios of the areas, the value of 4 to 1. So let's consider the NAND gate here. We've got our depletion load and we've got our enhancement drive transistors. So we've seen that in the case for the simple inverter, that if we wanted to bring this down to 0.5 volts, in order to do that, we would have to ensure that there was a ratio 
between these transistors here, so the top transistor and, in effect, the bottom chain of transistors. So that would be a ratio 1 to 4. But we don't have just this one transistor, which is going to be four times bigger. We've actually got two transistors. So instead of the trans each of these transistors being two, four times bigger, we're going to have each of them is going to have to be two times bigger, and that would have to be two times bigger. And you can see this here. If we were to look at this transistor here, then we would have the width of the transistor, and we would also have the length of the transistor here across the drain source. So in effect that's this little area in here. But that would mean the second transistor would have this little area here. So that's our width upon length. But that's equivalent to having just one transistor where the width is the same but the length is twice the value. So this is the, uh, an equivalent set up here. So we're actually going to have, in this instance here, these two transistors are equivalent to this one transistor, but the length here has increased by two. So if we were to look at this, we could say that if we were looking at it in terms of just the inverter, which is the single transistor, we would say that the width upon length for the drive, so this is the drive down here, it's going to be greater than or equal to four times the width of them upon length of the load. That's the load up here. Now, we've got this value here for four because we've decided on a, the output is 0 0.5 volts, but we might want something else, say 0 0.2 or 1 or some other voltage. So just to generalise it, rather than using the four, we'll just use uh, beta R. Okay, so this is just the, the ratio of these transistor areas. So it means that the effective width upon length is actually this width here upon 2L. Or if we had three transistors, it would be the width upon 3L. If it was four transistors, it would be width upon 4L. So this is the effective width upon length. I've just called this W upon L effective. So as I said, that if we had the two transistors in series here, we would have to ensure that the overall width upon length is two times the effective width upon length. And if it was three times, it would be three times width of the effective width upon length. If it was n times, it would be n times the effective width upon length. And now this here shouldn't say four, it should say L. So I'll just scrub that out just now and I'll put it in. So that's L. So it's best seen by example, so let's go and we'll do an example of using this and you'll see it's quite straightforward. Let's look at this example here. We said that for a simple inverter, we wanted the drive transistor to the load transistor ratio to be a value of 4 to 1. So I've got this drawn down here. Let's imagine we looked at the area of this transistor here then we could say that this is the width here in this direction and this is the length. So that's the length of the channel. So let's define this width upon length as a value of 1. Then this here would have to be 4 times it and I've actually drawn down 4 of these. So in effect we've kept the width the same but we've made the length 4 times. Now we would have to keep this same ratio 1 upon 4 for each of the branches here. So in order to do that we'll get two transistors here. So that means that this one would have to be 2 and 2. And this one over here, well we can see that in this branch here the current's either going to flow down this route here or it's going to flow down this route here. So what we want to do is create this such that we've got 2 here and we've got a value of 2 here as well. So that's going to be a value of 4. So equivalently down this route here will also be a value of 2 and a value of 2. When we add them together we get the value of 4. Now when we head down through this route here you can see that we've got three transistors. Now we could use the 
ratio of 4 upon 3, 4 upon 3 and 4 upon 3 because when you add all those up you end up with 12 upon 3 which is a value of 4. But we don't need to go to that detail, we can still just use the simple values. We could make this a value of 1 and we can make this the value of 1 and we can make this one the value of 2. So the overall value for the area is going to be the same as this effective area here which will be a value of 4. Now if we look at this branch here, we can split it into two. We can use the exact same ratios that we used in the D branch here. So we could have 1, 1 and 2. So that's going to be a value of 4. Now whenever we work down this leg here, again we're going to have to sum it up to 4. So we can have the value of 1. And then this here would be a value of 3. And notice the value of 3 is the same as the sum of these two here as well. So you can see that it's actually um, quite simple whenever you get through uh, an example and you can see how you can split up the width to length ratios for a network for an NMOS design. So that's all for this video. I'll get you on the next video. Goodbye.